Welcome to the Rediscovering Your Creative Self podcast, where you get a weekly dose of inspiration and motivation for your creative practice. In the weeds. Where I live, there's a lot of sand and clay in the ground. And when we moved into our home here, let's just say the lawn was in the weeds. So what we did is multiple times put down fresh loom, you know, did all of the stuff that normally you would expect um, grass to grow. But eventually what would happen is the grass seed and the loom and everything else, when it rained, and it did, it would filter down through the sand. And of course, then the sand would come up again. And all we did after doing all that effort is create more weeds. We even went as far as putting down sod. And we thought, oh my goodness, this was the answer. This was it. Well, that lasted a couple of years. And then again, the sand started to come back up. Eventually, we decided to do a new strategy. And this one was for our area not really the sort of the considered option, but we tried a different kind of grass. This one is called a zoysia grass. And the zoysia grass is best in really warm climates because um, it's a grass that kind of comes back every year new. Uh, So it kind of dies at the end of the season and then it comes back new. So we said, well, let's give it a try. You know, what do we got to lose? Because when we looked it up, it's also a grass that once it takes, you know, it spreads it, you know, it's kind of um, a species that will choke out the weeds. Its roots are really deep and um, it's supposedly drought free. So I said, oh, this is perfect, (laughs) you know, for a busy artist. So we got the zoysia grass and It took a little bit of time, um, but then it started to spread. And now it's probably two thirds of our lawn in the back and the front have this really amazing, thick, gorgeous grass. And you are probably wondering at this point, what does this got to do with art and my artistic practice? Well, The lawn that I used to have, okay, even though I still sort of have that a little bit because we still, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. Okay. Um, it was often like many of us working as artists, we try the normal things. Okay. We try the normal, uh, traditional, you know, techniques of painting and drawing and we go through school and we do all the things like we were doing with our lawn but somehow we kept coming up with sand sand and rocks wasn't taking it wasn't working and that happens to so many artists I see it when I teach not everybody is meant to be the same. Not everybody is meant to learn the same. Everybody has a different way they enter into the process. Everybody has a different way in which they learn. And everybody has a different way in which they want to express themselves. Sometimes they just don't know it. And they end up with sand and rocks or in the weeds. So if you find that what you're planting, all you're getting is weeds and rocks and nothing's really taking, nothing's really growing, you have to ask yourself, maybe I need to put down a different kind of lawn. Maybe I need to grow something different. Maybe I need to have a process or some way in which I'm working that works for me that works for my soil, that works for my landscape. Not everybody is meant, like I said, to be the same or do things the same way. 
So very much like my husband and I, you need to investigate other ways of working or even explore those ways by experimenting yourself. But you got to put the effort in. Don't just sort of give up into the weeds. Don't give up in just having this horrible lawn, okay? You have to do some effort in order to figure out a new way. And is that new way going to be miraculous? And it's just going to be in one day, hello? Well, maybe. But it might be just like our zoysia grass. It takes some time. But when it does, the roots are deep, it's drought-free, and it chokes out the weeds with no effort by you. You don't have to do all these special processes and, you know, put this in the lawn and put this and every, you know, every spring you got to do this. It's a hardy, comes back new every year. So when you find your way, when you find your process, when you find something that works for you, and it may be just tweaking different parts of the process, you'll find it's going to be so much easier. You're not going to be growing weeds anymore. You're going to be growing hardy green grass. Things are going to be richer in your process and it's going to spread. It's going to spread. You know, one of the interesting things about the zoysia grass is it spreads like tentacles and then those tentacles fill in because it keeps spreading and spreading and spreading. That's what you want. Those are the ideologies that you want to think about in your process, in your approach to art. And for some of us, it may not be what we're doing in our art. It might be how we're letting people know about what we do in our art. So what's the promotional aspects of what we do we got the process down and we're out of the weeds with that. But then it's the, how do I make a living at this? How do I connect with people who appreciate this unique way or expression that I put out into the universe? And that's a whole nother. Are you growing weeds? All the stuff and efforts are you doing? Is the rain just coming down and then the, you know, no more soil, no more topsoil and the sand is coming up? You got to find a back door. You got to find another way in which to promote. You know, I teach a class in an MFA program, actually several MFA programs on promotional strategies and marketing. And I always tell my artists that artists are not like widgets, okay? All those business books that, you know, you know, promoting a widget, a widget being just sort of like a, a generic product. Well, artists are thinking, breathing, emotional human beings. You can't just tell us to change things and now we're new and improved. We're not new and improved. We'll be very unhappy if you make us change our emotional connection to our work, we have to find other outlets, other ways of promoting. It's not the simple, you know, put down the loom and the fertilizer and the grass seed. It doesn't work for everybody. And a lot of artists struggle with this. But if you can relate it to the lawn that I was talking about, you need to find your own zoysia grass. You need to find that other way of promoting, that other way of working. Some of you may need to build a market for your work, okay? Others may have a market, but you're not speaking clearly to that market. I mean, there's so much more we could be talking about um, that, you know, like I said, I do a, a whole class on these things. But to understand that anything that you're doing just because there is a quote unquote want, you know, sort of the traditional accepted way of, let's say, growing a lawn, 
doesn't mean it works for everybody. And it's frustrating. We even bought the stuff that's supposed to grow on cement and that still didn't work. Okay. So it's not like we were doing the lack of trying. We just had to find the right thing for us, for our lawn. You have to find the right thing for your process to be successful for you and for your approach to the way if you do get involved with um, being a professional artist or you are a professional artist and you're struggling in certain aspects of promoting that work and building that brand, maybe you're just following the wrong steps and you need to find another way. You need to get yourself out of the weeds. So with that, I'd like you to think this week, whether it's something to do with your process or something to do with the way you are promoting your work or the messaging, having a more clear understanding of what you uniquely bring to the table and how to take that message to a marketplace that has a synergy to what it is that you have to uniquely offer. And maybe there's other ways, other ways in which you can promote, you know, because artists aren't widgets. We aren't, you know, robotic people that can, everybody fits and follows the same steps and gets a beautiful lawn. doesn't always work that way. Sometimes we have to do something a little bit different. So think about that this week and start to journal, start to think about what are some of the other things you can try that you haven't tried. You know, stop thinking within that box where you're limited to this is what is been done. You know, the, the, the most unique thing and one of the things that I have in one of my lectures um, when I'm teaching is the people who have kind of been the innovators in promoting their work or people that went outside and did something completely different to what was expected in the market. And actually that's what made them stand out. So don't take off your list, okay, or, you know, X out an approach because you don't see it out there. Sometimes we have instincts that guide us and you need to listen to those instincts because sometimes that will give us some ideas of what that path could be. But you got to do some work. It took us several attempts at this whole lawn situation to get something and we had to invest. We had to research. We had to do things. We had to do a lot of hard work. We did most of this work ourselves. It's not easy. Nobody said it's going to be easy, but it's always worth it in the end, isn't it? So with that, have a fantastic week. And as always, create from the heart. This audio series is part of my Navigating the Labyrinth of the Creative Mind Patreon endeavor. The site uniquely intermixes self-reflection and personal storytelling with exploratory mixed media techniques and expressive approaches to art making, elevating the creative consciousness and guiding each person on his or her own path to discovering the creative spark that resides within. Check us out at www.patreon.com slash Lisa L. Sear, and that's spelled C-Y-R. <laughs>